Hi, and welcome to this video on simplifying algebraic fractions. It's a higher GCSE topic, which means that you're going to have to be able to be able to do certain things already. For example, um, in this video I'm expecting that you already know how to factorise expressions, factorise quadratics, and be able to cancel down fractions. Let's just have a quick look at what I need to be able to cover in this video. I'm going to show you... Um, very quickly how to uh, factorize expressions, how to cancel terms out, and using those skills how we can then simplify fractions that have got algebraic terms in them. Let's start off by looking at this very simple example here. If you ask to simplify or cancel down or leave in its lowest terms a fraction that looks like this, what you would be doing is thinking what number can I, um, what number goes into 12 and what number goes into 18? And probably quite quickly you would be able to say, well, 6 goes into both. Um, that means it cancels down to um, 2 thirds. Now, and, and that's correct. Let's just think about where that comes from, though. Um, 12 can be rewritten as 6 multiplied by. 2. And 18 can be rewritten as 6 multiplied by 3. In effect, what we're doing is taking a common factor of 6 out of both 12 and out of 18. And if I rewrite this as a fraction like this, we can see that the 2 thirds, we can almost see now where the 2 thirds has come from. It's here. But why can we just cross out these two sixes? Well, Again, this goes back to how fractions work. 6 times 2 over 6 times 3 is the same as 6 over 6 multiplied by 2 over 3. Remember, when you multiply in fractions, we multiply in tops and multiply in bottoms. So, 6 over 6 is the same as 1. This is the same as 1 lot of 2 thirds, which is just 2 thirds. Okay, you need to be able to really understand this in, in some detail, really, so that when we start to simplify algebraic fractions, you can see what we're doing and why we end up crossing out terms on the top and on the bottom, why we cancel them out. Um, it, fundamentally, it's because of this idea that we're doing on this slide here. Okay, have a look at um, a fraction then that's got some algebraic terms in it. This one uh, has got just both linear terms so there's no um, powers other than uh, x being to the power of 1 we've got no quadratics or cubics or anything nasty um, so what we need to be able to do is factorize the top and the bottom so we're going to think what goes into 8x and 4 well 4 goes into both of these 4 goes into uh, 8x 2 times, or 2x times, and 4 goes into 4 once. So the top part of my fraction factorises to give me 4 lots of 2x plus 1. Let's look at the bottom part of my fraction. Again, I'm thinking, what's a, a, the biggest factor that goes into 18x and 9? And 9 does. 9 goes into this. Uh, 2x and 9 goes into 9 once. Hopefully at this point you can see that what we've got is 4 lots of 2x plus 1 divided by 9 lots of 2x plus 1. That's the same as 4 ninths multiplied by 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 which is the same as saying that these can cancel out to just give us 1, which gives us our final answer of 4 ninths. Now, you're not expected to follow this process here and write all this down in an exam. You're not expected to do that, and you're not required to do it either. I'm only showing you so you can see what actually is happening, so that you don't start crossing things out um, that you can't. Okay, so you could straight away have gone, okay, 2x plus 1 there, 2x plus 1 there, cancels out, gives me 4 ninths, final answer. I just wanted to show you how it works and relate that back to the numbers we were doing before. What I don't want you to do 
is to start looking at these and thinking, oh, well, I've got an 8x plus 4 and an 18x plus 9. That means I can cancel out my x's. You can't do that. Even if you wanted to, even if it's tempting to, you cannot do that. You've got to factorise first. Okay. Let's look at this example then. This time I've got a linear term at the top, 2x plus 2, and a quadratic term at the bottom of my fraction. So I'm still going to have to factorise this. Let's think about it in step by step. Think about the top. What, can I fa what goes into 2x um, plus 2? Well, 2 does. Let's take a common factor of 2 out. So we've now got 2 lots of x plus 1. Factorise in the quadratic, hopefully you can remember that we are finding numbers that multiply together to give us minus 7 and add together to give us minus 6. So we can say that we've got our two brackets. Both are going to have x's in. Um, I'm going to have to have a minus sign and a plus sign. So think about the way that this is going to work. Uh, I can have x minus 7 and x plus 1. That works nicely. Now I can see, lo and behold, I've got a common factor. And this is what we're trying to factorise for. To see if there's anything then on the top here that matches anything on the bottom. And it does. We've got an x plus 1 at the bottom and an x plus 1 at the top. So we can simply cross those out like we were looking at before and see what we're ending up with. In this case, I've ended up with 2 lots of, uh, sorry, 2 over x minus 7. So it's simplified down to this. Okay, here we've got two questions that I want you to have a go at by yourself. I will show you how you do them in, in, in a second. The first question has just got two linear terms. The second question is a little bit more tricky. You've got two quadratics. I'd go about it in the same way. I'd factorise the top, factorise the bottom, see if there's anything that we can cancel out. Okay, so I would pause the video now and have a go yourself. Right, let's have a look what we did then. On this first one, we've got uh, two linear terms, so we need to factorise these. Um, it looks like 6 goes into the top, so we've got 6 lots of 2x uh, minus 5. Uh, the bottom, it looks like 9 goes into those, so 9 lots of, again, 2x minus 5. Fantastic, that means we can cross those out which gives me an answer of 6 ninths. Hopefully at that point you've then realised and you've spotted that 6 ninths is the same as, um, well, let's see, what goes into 6 and 9 is 2 thirds. So 3 goes into them, a final answer of 2 thirds. With this one, um, you should factorise top and bottom. So again, we end up with x minus 3 and x minus 8 all over x minus 3 and x plus 6, which means that we can cancel out our x minus 3 terms, leaving me with x minus 8 over x plus 6. There is nothing else I can do. Do not at this point be tempted to start crossing out x's and write my answer down as minus 8 6 or anything silly like that can't do anything else this is my final answer and I'm going to leave it at that okay so if you start taking uh, revision card notes throughout this series of videos what I would start to do here is think about all the key parts with this and you might want to write yourself um, a, a small example um, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you on this page as well and that's if you had something that looked like this let's say you were able to factorize something down and it ended up looking like, um, let's say you've got x plus 3 on the top, and you've got x plus 3 on the bottom, and let's say another term, x plus 2. And you're quite happy to cross this part out here with this, but you're not sure now whether, whether this is, the answer would be x plus 2 or what in fact is going on here. I just want to bring you back to before what we were saying, this would be the same as say, that the answer here would be 1 over x plus 2. I just want to explain why again. x plus 3 over x plus 3 is the same as 1. 
and that will be multiplied by something over x plus 2. Well, I've only got one lot here. I've only got one lot of x plus 3, so this has to be 1 there. So this cancels out to give us 1 multiplied by 1 over x plus 2. Okay, so in terms of what we're actually doing then, in, all, in every question like this, we're trying to factorise all our expressions as fully as possible to enable us to cancel out any like terms. If it looks like, as I've just done an example here, we've cancelled everything out, but we're not quite sure what to put at the top, it's always replaced here by 1. If everything's disappeared, we replace it with a 1. Okay, hopefully this has been useful for you. Um, I have done other videos that you can check out on my YouTube channel. Uh, I will be doing more over the Easter holidays and more in the future. So hopefully if you enjoy them, subscribe, keep watching and good luck with your exams.